One of the things I had to do was because Betty is no longer with us, we had to use a photograph from the past. I couldn't take my own reference photo. And so um, John actually provided a photo for me. And one of the things that I actually spent a long time doing was figuring out the format. Did I want to do a horizontal format? Did I want to do a vertical format? Did I want to keep the same format as the photo and just paint what, I, what was in that photo? And after thinking about it a lot, I really came to the conclusion that I wanted to do something that would really focus on their personalities and bring their faces, their livelihood uh, to the foreground. And um, with the original photo, having them kind of being surrounded by so much landscape, I felt that um, while it works great for a photo, I felt that it kind of made it so that they seemed very small. And frankly, like on, even though I was painting on really large canvas, 18 by 24, it was their faces were still going to be smaller than the palm of my hand. And so I had some concerns just with the practicality of achieving like a likeness and a sense of realism at that small size. But I also felt like I didn't want them to feel small because um, these are two individuals who are hugely impactful in everybody's life who knows them. And so I wanted them to feel large and huge. <laughs> One of them to take up space in the painting and I wanted everything to focus on them. I kind of wanted to cut out everything that wasn't important. I wanted to cut out, you know, frankly, the landscape, the, uh, all that stuff, not important. What was important is their personalities and the life uh, in, in their faces and their, just their spirit, trying to convey that. And that's one of the hardest things that I think you can try to do as a painter. Normally when I start a painting, a lot of times I start with the biggest brush and go gradual, uh, gradually towards my shapes and my tones and my colors. But this time I really wanted to be as accurate as possible with the drawing and try to maintain that. And so that meant breaking that rule of using big brushes first and I actually used small brushes first to really maintain the drawing, um, the accuracy of the drawing so that I could maintain the um, Okay, so that I could maintain the likeness. I wanted to maintain the likeness kind of above all costs. To me, that's one of the most important things that you can do. So, uh, brought in the small brushes and did what I always do. Started with the dark and worked my way up from there. I will say that it was a little bit unnerving because it took such a long time for the painting to look right. Um, uh, man, more than halfway through this thing, I felt like the colors were wrong and I felt like I wasn't sure if my colors were really right, if they were really working or if I was just totally crazy because um, things just, against that white background, things look really crazy. But I do think as we watch, the, watching this footage back and watching the paint, painting uh, and portrait kind of emerge, um, it's really cool to see it like slowly take shape and um, as I went along I definitely gained more and more confidence that way. So the first thing I did was crop the photo and I also, um, and I had some difficulty with that because I was trying to decide like I really liked his arm around her shoulder and things like that but because of their height differential it was kind of difficult. Oh my goodness buddy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Are you all right? Are you doing okay? You doing all right? Okay. You know, because of their height differential, then it was really difficult. Her her head was so, so low because she was a lot shorter. You know, if I kept his arm around her in the composition, it was difficult because I felt like I was chopping off too much of her torso. And so it was like, I wanted to really, again, focus on their faces and the fact that they're kind of leaning towards each other and try to capture that love and
As you've been seeing with this whole process, I really focused on putting in my darks first. And um, as you saw me laying the background there, that was mostly to help me try to kind of get a perspective on the tonal values because at the beginning there, um, it just looked wrong, you know? Um, these dark tones that uh, I'm color checking um, against photo reference that you can see in my hand there. Uh, I'm color checking them and, and really trying to like double and triple check and make sure my color mixes are accurate and tonally accurate. Um, that's one of the most important aspects of getting a likeness and a sense of realism and depth. I, I didn't want these portraits to look cartoonish. Um, I wanted them to be really good. Um, but it was really difficult until I started getting down a lot of tone laid down. Here's you see me uh, doing the mouth. This is this is something that I've been working on over the past few months is um, kind of learning how to how to draw teeth. Uh, it's kind of interesting with a lot of classical portraiture. We don't really have um, the depiction of teeth. You know, if you look at a Rembrandt or a Singer Sargent or something, there's there's not often teeth in uh, painted portraits. And um, you know, it's just a difference of style and different eras. Nowadays, um, it is customary for us to smile. And also, if you're using a, a photo reference, uh, in this case, the, the photo reference was taken and they're smiling. And so this is a part of the anatomy that I've never thought about having to, uh, to paint before. But one of the keys with that is, I think, um, not overly defining every single individual tooth, but really just thinking about the overall form of, of the mouth as as a um, as a cylinder really one thing that I don't think everybody thinks about I certainly didn't when I started this painting is that a portrait is really a study in multiple features like the ear is a portrait the nose is a portrait the mouth is a portrait um, because these are all you know easily identifiable um, features that you know, family members and people, you know, your family, they know the look of your ears. They know the look of your nose. They know your your face. And, you know, if you've ever had that um, sensation where you see, you know, a, a family member or someone you know intimately, even from behind or from the side or from a distance, right? You can tell tell them. And, and so um, it's not something I necessarily considered until doing this, that, you know, it's not just... Um, you know, the classic triangle of achieving a likeness is, you know, the eyes, nose, and mouth. Um, but it goes way beyond that to the ears, the, the cheekbone, the, the curvature of the forehead, the, the hair, really every aspect of the portrait is the portrait. Um, and so I, I didn't really feel like I could relax uh, with any of these features too much um, until I got to the end, really. Another aspect to um, this portrait commission, which um, I needed to do two of them because um, one was for uh, one uh, side of the family and one was for the other side of the family. And so that's actually why I'm painting two of them simultaneously. So you're seeing me kind of bounce back and forth between uh, painting. Sometimes, you know, I would put my first paint stroke on the right and then this followed up paint stroke on the left. And then I would often, to try and keep them similar, um, then start on the left and then go back to the right and kind of bounce back and forth that way so that it wasn't like, um, you know, maybe the first time I make a mistake and then I learn from that mistake and do a better job on the second one. I was, I was really trying to be very conscious of trying to keep each painting uh, as identical as possible and as, as good as possible for both of them and not have, you know, um, if I just went left, right, left, right, left, right, then the painting on the right would always have the benefit of uh, basically having me practice already, having me already lay down that paint stroke and even maybe subconsciously um, learning from that. So um, yeah, here you can see like, okay, I go left, right, left, right, and then I kind of mix that up and I go right, left, right, left. Um, and I probably messed that up at some points too, but 
I was trying to consciously think about not letting, you know, one of them uh, take precedence or whatever. And I, I considered about like moving the canvases or whatever, um, switching them back and forth and trying to do things like that. But I, I thought that the easiest way was just to, you know, if I, you know, did work on the nose, for instance, on the one on the left, then I would do the nose on the right and then start the next feature on the right and then go over to the left so that both paintings, you know, were kind of um, achieving the same um, likeness and achieving the same level of finish and I was doing the same strategy and mental strategy of okay I'm gonna blend this color into this this shape over here and and not just get and and, and I really needed to do it uh, one after the after another um, so that I was really in the same mindset and the same kind of mental problem solving one problem at a time solve it solve it the same way um, and then go to the go to the next problem really like every little um, line that I'm drawing on the canvas here you can see is is that an individual color or shade or tone that I've identified and a lot of times I um, as I as I went through I started to identify like the better practice was to try to do two um, color shapes or tonal shapes adjacent uh, to one another um, so that I could blend them and not get lost uh, lost in that so really as I started at the beginning of the painting it was uh, very much um, lay the color down, go to the other canvas, lay the color down, you know, go from dark to light. Um, but then I started to kind of do consecutive after, after a day or two, I started to do consecutive, um, shapes so that they could blend into each other. And here you can see number one, I'm doing the teeth, but I'm trying to be very subtle. I'm thinking of it as a cylinder. So I'm thinking which part of this cylinder is going to be receiving the light. I'm making indication that yes, there are separate teeth there, but I'm not overly defining every tooth. Um, I'm trying to keep it kind of tonally uh, close so th that it's not cartoonish. I'm not outlining every tooth. The other thing that you know, you'll know, you see, especially if you skip back to um, John's mouth or whatever, neither of their teeth am I using white. Um, and, and there's a, a good reason for that. It's not, it's not uh, has nothing to do with the, the actual color of their teeth uh, because teeth are white um, they're really going to reflect the flesh color that's around them so um, when you paint teeth uh, if, if you want to do it number one I would say first think of the large shape of a cylinder think about where is the light hitting that cylinder and just paint a flat cylinder and then you can go in and maybe think about one tooth or like some area where you really want to have definition particularly with with uh, John's mouth here you know really see the upper teeth uh, being separated from the bottom teeth and I felt that you know the contour of his teeth was sort of a idiosyncratic aspect of his portrait I mean I, I'm sure that people recognize his smile and so I did define sort of the the lower outline of uh, his teeth line um, but I, I tried to really focus on like I said the overall shape and maybe define one tooth or something so that you know, the viewer has the impression that there are separate teeth there. And then think about your light source, but also pay attention, it, almost forget about what the local color is because teeth are um, on the whiter side of things uh, and they're a hard surface and they're often moist. They're gonna be very reflective. And so you're gonna be reflecting the color of what's in your mouth, the, tissue, the mouth tissue, the lip tissue and things like that. And so it's really going to be brownish, reddish, uh, yellowish colors for teeth, pretty much in almost any circumstances, except for some kind of extreme, you know, lighting situation or some really avant-garde portrayal of a mouth. So, um, yeah, I wanted to be subtle with it. And uh, I really had to, to stop for a few days and think about how do I paint teeth? Um, because it was just something I'd never done before. I think so much of this portrait felt wrong um, really until you're starting to fill in the gaps, um, you know, fill in the eyes, fill in the nose, fill in the mouth, get that skin tone on there. And when there's less and less and less white on the canvas, I really started to feel more and more comfortable. Like, okay, I'm making the right color decisions. Um, that reflected light on um, Betty's uh, face, that those, those big patches of gray, um, it feels wrong, right? But uh, in the moment, it felt wrong to me. But um, I believe from the photo reference that, you know, because they're in an outdoor setting, this is either, you know, natural light from the sky or it could have been from a reflector that the photographer was using. And um, 
This is in part why I chose blue for the background was to um, kind of make a nod to the fact that John's a pilot. And so, you know, he's in the air and um, I kind of wanted to almost have an otherworldly, heavenly quality. Um, and, uh, you know, just uh, also be a complimentary color to uh, the sort of orange tones of their, of their skin and kind of play off with that to increase a sense of vibrancy. In general, I was only using the Zorn palette um, which kind of gives you a lot of desaturated colors. So for the portrait itself, um, I used cadmium red, medium, yellow ochre, and ivory black, and plus white. And um, that, that gives you very desaturated reds, desaturated oranges, desaturated pretty much everything. I mean, black is literally your blue. Um, but I did pull out ultramarine blue for that background, and I pulled out ultramarine blue for their shirts to sort of um, reflect the light source that would have been in the blues. So that was my mentality there. And, you know, one one thing that uh, I think when you're painting older people, um, it's kind of nice because, you know, they have uh, defined features and wrinkles and, and things that are, um, you know, that it, for a painter, you want to show form. You want form and light. And, um, at the same time, you know, uh, I, I didn't want to shy away from wrinkles. I didn't want to shy away from from that, but I also didn't want to overly emphasize it. Kind of like with the teeth, you know, I think like if you overemphasize a wrinkle or overemphasize a tooth or overemphasize um, something like that, it, it, it's almost like you could ar artificially age a person or, or, or make them just look cartoonish or something. And I kind of wanted a timeless quality. And so I tried to be mindful of, um, you know, painting in such a way that obviously they're, um, you know, uh, elderly in this photo, but uh, also I, I, I feel like there's an essence of, of life there where you can almost see see them as young also. And and I was really pleased with that effect. And, and I think that happened because I was trying um, not to overemphasize the uh, wrinkles and lines and things too much. I, I put them in, but not too much. Here you see me breaking out this big brush, and that's something I should have done a long time ago at the beginning, like especially for the background. It really let me cover a lot of uh, ground. Uh, two things with that, I, I forgot that I owned that brush actually. Uh, it was away in the closet, and the reason for that is uh, because it's broken. <laughs> so the, the ferrule with the brush actually pops off, and uh, I, I've never used it for oil painting. Usually I use it for um, a large acrylic painting that I had done. That, that was basically it, and it broke the first time I used it. But I needed to cover all this territory. I was up against a deadline. This was for Christmas. I literally had a few days. I was, I was hoping that this painting would dry. Uh, and luckily it was dry on December 24th. I was able to uh, frame it and get it delivered in time. I really love being loose with their clothing here. I love being loose. Um, with that and that was when I could finally let my guard down a little bit You might have noticed that um, you know, I had lines earlier for jewelry, but I decided to take it all out except for the earrings and um, This is the finish piece Both of them truly an honor um, I've never worked harder on any paintings in my life um, multiple days painting 10 12 hours, but it was 100% worth it and an amazing experience. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Thanks. You got a voice that matters. Go be creative. I'll see you next time.